thanks a lot for coming to the morning session. I know it was hard for all of you guys uh, who's partying yesterday. So, um, today I'm, I'll talk about uh, the mobile publishing landscape, um, uh, the things that we've been seeing and the reasons why uh, we think that developers need to work with publishers. So a brief background on Gameville. Uh, we were founded in 2000. We've been doing mobile games uh, since, since then. Uh, we have 300 people, uh, around 300 million installs on iOS and Android, and our office is in Los Angeles, Seoul, Tokyo, and Beijing. So we also have a partner fund, uh, which is, uh, okay, um, uh, for, for third-party publishing. Uh, we started out doing a lot of internal development at the beginning, but uh, since two years ago, we started doing uh, third-party publishing, and last year we did 46 titles. Um, we're a publicly listed company, and uh, last year we did around $70 million in revenue. Uh, this year, we're projecting to do around $100 million. So, why do you need a publisher? Um, the first thing is uh, that I do want to mention is that distribution is more complex nowadays. Um, you have the global markets like the App Store and Google Play, which are the most important markets. And then you also have uh, smaller markets like Amazon, also local markets uh, like the T-Store uh, and like Tencent, 360 in China. And then you also have the social markets uh, like Kakao, Line, and Facebook. So there, uh, um, it's, in order to maximize your revenues, it's very important to hit all of these markets. Uh, and um, like for, for instance, like in, in 360, uh, you, you can make up to uh, $600,000 a day um, just in China too. So uh, these markets aren't small and um, are pretty sizable compared to the other global markets in the world. One of the things that, uh, um, w in the past, when you look at the App Store, the stores were very similar from country to country. One thing that I've been noticing, and everybody's been noticing, is that all the stores are becoming more like local stores. And uh, US is, uh, of course, the hugest market in the world. However, Japan has been growing really fast. It's the second largest market. South Korea is the third largest market. And, um, and China's up there just with the iOS market. And if you look at the top rankings in each of these stores, they're very different, which means you can't handle everything in one place. You really need uh, a publisher who could cover all of these different type of regions because they, they act very differently. Discovery is becoming more and more difficult. I think uh, so more app, apps are published daily. Um, it's really harder to do burst, burst campaigns. User costs are also rising. And so you need a, you need a, a starting point at one point. You, of course, I'm, uh, I think there's a plenty of really good ad networks and a lot of ad mediation layers too. So if you have the money, I think um, you could uh, effectively do uh, user acquisition these days. However, discovery is, is still very challenging. The competition is getting more and more stiff. So there are more players in mobile. Uh, before it was a lot of uh, pure indie developers or developers who used to do mobile, but now your competitors are coming in from all different type of spaces. So you have console developers now developing for mobile. You have online PC game developers. You also have social gaming developers. And then um, there's a lot of gambling developers coming in too. And I think uh, especially in the Eastern Europe, I think the web developers are very powerful too. The, since the competition is becoming more stronger, uh, you need a bigger budget uh, development in order to succeed. And the users are getting smarter and smarter, and uh, their quality bar has been rising significantly too. So back in the days, um, being a one-man shop and just 
put, putting out the product like uh, Doodle Jump was was something that was possible. However, um, you're you're seeing less and less of these cases actually happening. Uh, you're seeing bigger teams uh, running online services uh, in order to succeed. But the good thing is that more publishers are available these days. Um, of course, the first round of acquisitions have, have been over. Like the big companies like DNA, Cree, or Nixon, they all did hundreds of millions, uh, spent hundreds of millions of dollars to do acquisitions of studios like Njimoko, Funzio, and Gloops. And then, but the other thing is uh, there's less venture capital interest these days because there's less ways uh, for a developer to exit in some ways. So if you're not going to get the funding from these venture capitals, um, that's another reason why you, you may need to cooperate with a publisher. And these publishers um, have very large user, user base. Uh, we're, we're small compared to some of them out there, but like, they all have at least hundreds of millions of users that you can leverage al already. And since, uh, since it's not the very beginning nowadays, a lot of these companies also have been accumulating revenue uh, so far. And since these bigger players are coming in from different industries, there are more and more companies with cash. And um, these companies will be able to fund your, fund your games. So back to the point that local presence is becoming more important. So top apps are different in Asia, like even the user acquisition channels are significantly different. The localization is very key. I see, I see, I've been seeing a lot of uh, developers doing very poor uh, localization. And there's a lot of uh, larger uh, s local social networks that are very popular. Um, and then when you're running events, you have to like hit certain holidays that are, that are relevant to each country too. So, uh, local live operations are becoming more and more important. So th I think everybody knows Kakao. However, uh, Kakao is the largest instant messenger platform in Korea. Uh, they're daily active. Uh, the last time I checked, it was a couple of months ago, but they, their daily active is around 30 million uh, users. And with 30 million users, uh, that's a huge install base uh, that they could drive to any of the, these companies. So. These uh, instant messaging platforms are becoming more and more important. That was Kakao. Line is the largest one in Japan, and I think it's gaining a lot of uh, popularity in the Southeast Asian re region. They have 200, 200 million installs uh, uh, in July. So when I talk about live operations, live operations are really critical. So. Um, you have to run games as a service. I think uh, there's been a lot of topic about can you go paid uh, versus free. I think every game has to go free in order to su uh, succeed. And it's not, if you're doing it for the first time yourself, you, you actually don't know what type of events that you have to uh, run. You, you need a live operation specialist who has a lot of uh, experience. And I think that's something that the publishers can provide. This is, uh, this is the roles that we've been doing in our US office. So on the publisher side, it's, it's not like, a, like we're just passing through the deal. Uh, we have a lot of people involved. Uh, we have business development to handle relationships with Apple or Google. We have the production team who does the live operation. We have the localization team, which will help you localize properly for each market. We also have the community management. Um, we, we're, we're managing forums, we're managing Facebook and all the social networks. We have customer support, uh, receiving calls, receiving emails. Um, and we also have a graphic design team because we need to create these type of banners uh, to promote events. We also have a user acquisition team who will go out and buy, uh, buy users for you. We have a public relations team who will talk to the press. And we, we have an engineering team who will help you integrate uh, our SDKs and also server management is extremely important too. Since you're doing global services, uh, you need a team that could uh, handle scalable servers. And this is becoming more and more critical. We have a QA team 
who has to test all of your apps if, if it's done properly. And we also have a finance team who will send you monthly reports. So if you think about, uh, if, if you simply think that the publisher is a pass-through channel, it really isn't. Uh, and uh, in, in our headquarters, we have 300 people, but more than 100 people are staff people. And in our US office, we have 25 people. They're all staff. Um, they, don't, they don't do any type of development. So it's a, it's a big operation cost, uh, even for the publishers. And imagine that you have to do all of these things yourself. Um, it, it is possible, but I think uh, it's the, the chances of successes are getting lower and lower. And finally, the monetization techniques are improving. So um, I think a lot of the games actually have the same type of features in, in the game to, to be successful. And uh, without these type of things and without the specialty in these type of things, it's really hard for a developer to do these things for, um, by themselves for the first time. So uh, we, when you work with a publisher like us, uh, we'll give you like a six month plan, a one year plan, and we'll even break it down to weekly plans on uh, promotions for retention and promotions for monetization. And then uh, in order to monetize better on your game and in order to increase your um, uh, retention, you have to have competition and cooperation uh, aspects into it. Uh, you have to have progression in the games. Uh, and then you have to have gotcha systems, uh, which, which will help your monetization significantly. A lot of the games on Kakao, they have avatars, and they also have pet systems, too. And then, uh, as, you, if you, as you've been seeing with the uh, card, card battle games, these collection aspects are becoming more and more important, too. So, a lot of, uh, so on a publisher side, when, when we work with the developers, we help you implement all of these type, different type of systems inside the game, and we give you a lot of feedbacks that you could work on. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the game designer uh, from the developer can come up with all of these ideas, but I think it's better to think as a, 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 as a bigger team in order to create a bigger success. So, and, and I, we've been working with a lot of uh, studios that, that are sized around 15 to 20 people. They usually have three to four projects going on at the same time. And w what we've been telling them lately is, instead of doing three to four projects at the same time, con concentrate your resources and focus only on one or two products. Because as you've been noticing, um, this, was, uh, this is back in June, but like Supercell, they're the no they were the number one iOS publisher just with two apps. It's not, uh, EA had 829 apps, and they, they were generating way less revenue. So concentration is extremely important. Cree even had 121 one apps. And it's not only them, it's, it's actually our problem too. So back, back a couple of months ago, we had about six titles in the top 100. And all of these revenues combined together was smaller than a, a number three title in, in our local market. So we've also been talking to our own team, uh, trying to kill off some of the low priority projects and combining them together to bigger teams so that we can create a bigger success. The good thing is that there's more to share. So, um, and, uh, yeah, if you, the Puzzle and Dragons story is amazing because you can make $5 million uh, a day. It's not a week, it's not a month, it's not a year, it's a, a day. And uh, so I think um, if you make $5 million a day, I think there's, that's plenty to share. Uh, and I wouldn't mind giving half of, half of my revenues to the publisher if we come up with something like that. So in summary, so, going back to the points, distribution is becoming more and more complex, discovery is becoming more difficult, competition is stiff, but there are more publishers available, so you could start working on your products. Uh, local presence is more and more important, live operations are critical, monetization techniques are improving, and uh, more concentration is required 
but there's more to share. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you. I think that's fantastic. I mean, I think what you've highlighted for me is a really important point, is that we've entered this world where we're dealing with amazingly large numbers. You know, you talked about 30 million for cacao daily users, when we also know that 70 million daily active users use Candy Crush Saga. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are enormous, enormous numbers that no other uh, entertainment platform has been able to reach out to, in my mind. Uh, I mean, the five uh, million a day um, I think puts us in the same ballpark as uh, the GTA 5 guys generating 800 million in their first day. Now, I mean, okay, it's not quite the same scale if you put it that way, but given that GTA is a product and only will get that, you know, get the peak of its revenue at the early stages, whereas how long has Puzzles and Dragons been going? How long will it continue to go? Anyway, so I think it's great. One thing I, I was going to ask you, though, um, in terms of this experience, the, the question that always happened with publishers in mobile was did they really own their audience? One of the things you've said to me in the past, which I, I really like, and I think you've said it again here, is that your focus seems to be as much on supporting the ongoing value mm -hmm. of that content. Mm -hmm. How important is that? and what, Does that make you unique in those publishers? I mean, are other publishers recognizing that value? So uh, on owning the customers? On owning the customers, also on the ongoing support uh, of the developer is where I was going. Well, if you look at, so one of the, so we're a Korean company, so we've been benchmarking a lot of Korean companies out there. But if you look at a company like Nexon on where they, uh, where they are today, and they're basically a success story made out of uh, uh, Maple Story. Maple Story's been running for more than 10 years. And I think puzzle, uh, that, could, that could be similarly applied to a game like Puzzle and Dragon too. And so I don't think it's uh, the life, I think the, the lifetime values of these games are increasing significantly. And um, on, on the ownership of, of the games, I think um, like there's been a lot of stories uh, even on the online PC gaming story where the, uh, the developers have been actually uh, collecting more revenue and then once they, they're ready to re uh, renew the contracts with the publishers, they go on their own too. So there's a, a lot of different type of stories, um, but it really depends on how, how you structure the deals with, with, with them. But uh, it, I think um, having, uh, as a publisher, we do think about having that network effect. Uh, so it's, it kind of becomes a snowball effect at one point because you're, you're gaining uh, more and more users and then you're able to cross promote from those users again and again. So um, it's still the early stages and I don't think there's a solid answer to that today, but I think any company that has a very large user base um, like King.com, I think they, they can be very good publishers. Uh, I think it's, that's absolutely true. What's interesting for me is the number of traditional games publishers that haven't made that transition effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, some are still working at it, mm -hmm. but very few of the sort of old school publishers, can you say they've really got it? Mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps e with EA, it's sort of really mm -hmm. the Real Racing 3s and it's the, um, mm -hmm. uh, the Simpsons tap out that has shown that they can start moving in mm -hmm. that direction, perhaps. So uh, just a quick question for uh, you here. Uh, I was going to ask a quick question before I move to the audience questions. Was just how many of you are, are developing mobile games right now? Put your hand up. Okay. And keep your hand up if you're with a publisher right now. <laughs> okay. So proportionally, we've got a lot more indies in the room. <laughs> so lots of opportunity for you. <laughs> Let, okay. Now let's ask the question. I think you, you were saying you had a question. Uh, we've, got, we've got a mic. I think we'll okay. hopefully come to you. First of all, uh, what kind of users do you have? Like, uh, what is the ages of them, mm -hmm. what, where, from, where, where from, and my mm -hmm. second question is, uh, what is a typical commercial agreement with the developer? Mm -hmm. So, uh, for us, I think we're, we take on um, any type of good titles, but so far I think we're, our user base is very mid-core to hardcore. Uh, they're younger, they tend to be more male. Uh, I think, uh, there's there are different publishers that are a good fit to you. I think if you're if you have a hardcore game or a midcore game, I think companies like Gameville or Kabam could be a good publisher. 
And uh, if, you, if you have like a more casual game, uh, maybe s companies like Rovio or Chilingo or um, King.com type of companies could be a good potential pu publisher for you. Uh, the typical agreements that we do, uh, we do a 50-50 uh, revenue share with the developers, and uh, we, al we also put down minimum guarantees. Uh, it, it really depends on how much the development cost is. Any more questions? I have plenty. <laughs> is there a question over here in the blue shirt? Hi, thank you for your speech. So I have one question. Uh, you are saying that uh, a small studio developer, they should focus on one title, mm -hmm. like Supercell is, but uh, Supercell is quite uh, big enough and can afford it. Mm -hmm. Isn't it better for a small studio, which is willing uh, to work uh, in cooperation with publisher, to make uh, uh, several games in order to split risks? Mm -hmm. So wh why, why, why do you believe that uh, for a small studio it's a good idea to focus only on one or two titles? Because uh, your chances of successes are going to be very low, I think, if you divide your resources. Uh, uh, I think I in order to feel secure, uh, I, I know that if y you face a problem that uh, if, you fa if you're only working on one product and if that fails, your company fails. But, but um, the other thing is that you could get a, a certain level of security by working with the publishers who will, we, who will guarantee you uh, a certain amount of revenue. So uh, I think that will help your development costs. And uh, so I'm not saying like you shouldn't be prototyping at all, but I think you should be uh, spending the majority of your resources on, on that one title to make sure that it succeeds. Because at the end of the day, I, I've been looking at these companies that have been doing a lot of small products. It, I think the chances are higher that they all fail <laughs> rather than uh, one succeeding. <laughs> I think that's a really good okay, point. But there's a... There's a counter argument to that, which is the supercell approach. Mm -hmm. um, but what they've clearly done is try to focus on failing internally quickly. Mm -hmm. And that whole idea of the lean startup, mm -hmm. you know, to focus and to sort of fail quickly. Mm -hmm. When you scale internally, mm -hmm. that you should respond to that. And I think that's sh mm -hmm. obviously shown some success. I mean, $1.5 billion for 51% of the mm -hmm. company isn't bad. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's more to that. I mean, I think. The other thing, which uh, is something I write about in the book I'm just about to release in, in March, um, if you're looking at games as a service, the key thing is that you can iterate. You don't have to build the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You can focus on what is the core part of the fun and what keeps people playing, and then build on other aspects. Mm -hmm. And what happens if you do that mm -hmm. is that you don't need huge teams to make a product. Mm -hmm. You make the minimum that you need to be successful and then you build on that and build on that and build on that, able to sustain that team. Yeah, I'm, I'm not telling you guys that you have to do ha have like a 20-man team or something like that, but uh, what I'm saying is you shouldn't have like one to two people on, on, on a game. I think the, you should at least have, have five people on a team. Uh, and I think live operations are becoming more and more important. Uh, it's, m it's much more important than creating the first build, I think. Uh, running the games as a service is, uh, is uh, which will get you to success. That's great. Well, uh, on that note, I'm going to thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, a round of applause, please. <laughs> <laughs>